Hey, good morning, YouTube. It's Matt Nicholas, Le Sanglier Kiri, the guy who converts weed eater line into weird stuff. Um, today I got a weird little project. Um, so, for you Star Trek fans out there, uh, the Grand Negus's staff, that's a personal favorite character of mine. Um, main point of the project, though. Um, so let's say you've done a model. Um, it's not pegged. Uh, from splice to splice, obviously you've had to print it in smaller chunks because that's what would fit on your printer. So you end up having to do just a straight butt splice. Less than ideal. Uh, it's not a terribly strong joint. It's going to be something that's prone to failure. So I've seen a handful of, uh, of other folks discuss uh, using a soldering iron to work on your prints. Um, I did uh, I did a piece last week, um, and for all intents and purposes, ended up stick welding my piece. Um, you know, you end up with you know in my case, I typically end up with about a foot and a half, two feet of uh, filament inside a Bowden tube that is unusable, and in the past have been just tossing it in the recycling bin. Um, and I've started hoarding it now that I've done this once and it seems to have worked. Now bear in mind, I print solely in ABS. It's much higher temp and so I have the luxury uh, to have a little bit more working time. Um, I genuinely don't know how this would work on PLA. I think your risk of just completely blowing through your print or over melting stuff uh, would be considerably higher with it. But then again, for me, you'll see me on the forums repeatedly. I'm constantly saying, look, if you do props, if you do cosplay, um, it's well worth the time to upgrade your heat beds, uh, to build enclosures for your printers and to get those profiles dialed in for ABS. Um, I know it has its own side effects for carcinogenic fumes, et cetera, et cetera. You know, set up some filtration. Or, or print in another room, um, or set up an exhaust fan, whatever you gotta do. Uh, quite frankly, um, I find the, the, the quality of the prints is just top. Uh, they just hold up really well. You don't have any, any, any long-term issues. Not to say that PLA is not great, but to be honest, when you're cranking out serious volume, uh, post-processing comes into play and ABS just sands like a dream. It feels like a dream. It's just easier to work with than PLA. But then again, that's just my opinion. There's other folks that, that eat, breathe and sleep PLA and it's fine. And I'm not knocking PLA. It has its place. You know, I certainly believe that anybody just starting off in 3D printing, yes, by all means, work in PLA before you move on to other things. Um, and don't ask me about PETG. Uh, my, my, experiences are minimal with it. Uh, it's just not a, a, a plastic that I chose to work with. Um, I had years of working with ABS and uh, Styrene uh, doing uh, Star Wars cosplay armor. Um, it's plastic that I know intimately and, uh, and having done model kits as a kid, uh, most of them were ABS so or Styrene. So it's just a plastic I know like the back of my hand to work with. But suffice to say, um, I'm going to set this up and uh, see if I can't get the camera set up over this and see if we can't uh, use the soldering iron to kind of help melt and smooth uh, the seams a little bit so that you get a, um, a little bit more of a, a structural bond between the two. Um, and in some of these cases, like this, we're typically in the past... I would have used a uh, Bondo uh, glazing and spot putty. Um, I'm gonna try again, doing a little bit of just stick welding into them. And then uh, we'll come back through with uh, my favorite sander of choice, good old emery boards, and uh, knock out the roughness and uh, get on with business. Uh, the other thing I plan on doing, I wanted the details on the face to be, to be fairly crisp and clear. Uh, my support settings are fairly well dialed in, but as per usual, you still get, you know, a little bit of, uh, of wonky detailing uh, anywhere that the, that the supports were sitting. Um, 
my plan is to do a little bit of smoothing on those with the uh, with the with the uh, the soldering iron as well. And the same goes for uh, layer lines across the top of the print. I think that I can smooth those out as well. Um, and quite frankly, if my ideas uh, work out on this one, it could be a real game changer and time saver, both in materials and in time for post-processing your prints. So uh, hang with me and uh, we'll give this a shot and see how it pans out. Uh, in the meantime, uh, something to consider. You know, we've already broken 208 subscribers, 200, yeah, I think 208 this morning when I looked, subscribers. And thank you to all of you who click the thumbs up and click the like button and hang with me on this stuff. Uh, you know, this is all, this is noob time through and through, but uh, I'm more than happy to share what I know and uh, share the projects that I'm building. Um, if we hit uh, 250 subscribers, I'm gonna be picking a subscriber at random and uh, they're gonna be getting a uh, download code for uh, Simplify 3D. Um, so uh, if you are a Cura guy and you haven't wanted to spend uh, that 100 or 150 bucks, some odd bucks for, uh, for Simplify, uh, here's a freebie chance to, uh, to sink your teeth into it and try out another slicer. So hang with me and uh, we'll uh, see if we can't make this work. Alrighty, so in typical form, let's see here. I'm gonna clamp this in place. We've got our soldering iron preheated, and we've got a good uh, strip of uh, leftover filament. Oh, there it goes. Let me double check the camera here. Hopefully that view is decent. So we're gonna start off with this main seam. Um, I don't know how viewable it is here, but uh, given the fact that I'm a total total newbie at shooting this video stuff, we're gonna roll with it and uh, keep our fingers crossed that it's good enough. But uh, suffice to say, the goal is to melt some of the, oh, 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 oh. no bueno. So the goal, like doing soldering, is to let that tip kind of start to melt the plastic just a little bit right there on the tip top. And then what you're gonna do is just, just dab it lightly in place. Now there again, you know, with, uh, with PLA, I could see this whole process being much less forgiving. Um, with the melting temp of ABS, I have that extra second to just be able to kind of work with it. And obviously, you look, you're not looking for a perfect, a perfect finish, right? Um, you know, I know what a lot of people struggle with on their smaller printers. They go, well, I don't want to print a helmet or I don't want to print this piece because I'm going to have to chop it up into, you know, six pieces or 12 pieces or whatever, because then I'm going to have all these seams. Well, if you have your stuff set up to do in, in ABS like this, the nice part is that you can butt those seams together and uh, let's say you're doing a model where you don't have a, a pin system to help ensure that everything is lined up properly. Invariably, the larger the print, the more difficult it is to get your panels to line up properly. And you're always gonna, you know, you're gonna end up with those pieces that are slightly offset from each other. And it just goes with the territory. Um, so then your, your choice is to, you know, depending on how many exterior layer lines you did, you now have a whole bunch of sanding to try and sand it smooth, or you're adding a spot putty or whatever your filler of choice is. Um, I personally recommend Bondo glazing and spot putty. Uh, you can buy it in six packs on Amazon, it, and a tube will last you for, for a good bit, but you end up having to layer it in and kind of create a ramp and then visually you know, try to smooth it out and sometimes you can't get it 100% and then you're trying to hide your crimes with paint, which I don't think there's a single project that goes by where you're not trying to hide your, your, your crimes with paint, at least not in this shop. Um, but, uh, 
You know, I, I think that this is one of those techniques where not only are you getting a bond with the exact same plastic, but it gives you the opportunity to kind of help uh, level everything else because there again, it, it's like your printer is doing. It's additive, right? You're adding material in. So I printed a, a figure and, and I have I have not dipped my toe into resin printing. So printing smaller you know, figures or really intricate details in FDM is, is, is difficult for the best of us. Um, I had, and for those of you who think that, that prints always run perfectly in the shop, well, you can wake up to reality. I'll be more than happy to rest and <laughs> assure you that, uh, that they most definitely don't. I had a, uh, I was printing an entire leg and, uh, and the calf was up top printed from the shoe up um, at an angle and the uh, for whatever reason I, I checked the file the file was good to go but for whatever reason the thigh failed um, but it didn't fail completely and I decided to just let it print all the way up to the top it self-resolved and the the dimensions were still correct but it had this weird long uh, gash and hole all the way through the thigh I have absolutely no clue what it caused I went back I looked at the file the file was just fine no idea what happened, um, which is a rarity, quite frankly. Uh, and I ended up using this method to slowly add layers inside the thigh, build it from the inside out to where it was fairly smooth, and then hit it with an emery board for five seconds. And quite honestly, I, it came out, you would, you would never know. You would never know. And it was that process that made me go, well, you know, this may very well be something uh, worth sharing and food for thought for folks to just say this, 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 this is an, an alternate method and potentially a really good method um, for tackling seams on your prints. Uh, there again, you know, I, I, I have a roll of PTG, I may give it a shot. And, uh, and do a follow-up on this video just to see how well this method works for it. Um, but, you know, for, for half of the seam already being done, this is where we're at. And like any stick weld, it, it's not the, the prettiest thing on the face of the earth. But it only took me, what, a couple of minutes to do rather than smearing Bondo on it, having to wait for Bondo to dry and then coming back through and sanding. And I will bet dollars of dimes that once I come through with an emery board on the tail end of this, you're not going to see much of anything. I think uh, I think we'll have a really good a really good seam to throw a coat of primer over. Um, and structurally, structurally, now you've now you not only have a glue bond between the two, but around the entire exterior, you've now melted the top two layers together. They're now really well joined, and it eliminates the weakness of that butt joint. So I'm going to go on ahead and rotate the piece around. Um, and what I'm going to do is continue on with the rest of these seams. Uh, maybe I'll kick the video back up when I get to smoothing on the rough bits on the head. I don't know. Um, I kind of want to keep it short, uh, but I'll uh, bring the video back um, after I've hit it with the emery board and uh, we'll see what the results are like. So thanks for sticking with me. I wanted to bring the video back in uh, just to give a general idea of how well this seems to be working. Um, and there again, you know, bear in mind, you're, you're still gonna come back through and you're gonna do a little pass with, with the Dremel sanding board or, or sanding wheel, excuse me, and an emery board, but areas like this, where you can very clearly see uh, layers. Um, it's really easy to just come back, come in with the side of your soldering iron. And just with a little bit of light touching, you can smooth things out and those layer lines just slowly start to, to, to blend together. Um, And you can feel the plastic as it just starts to melt. You'll feel just a little bit of resistance. That's when you know that that top layer is just starting to melt, starting to skim coat just a little bit. 
and that's when you want to just work the 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 side of your of your iron back and forth and there again you know Christ this is just a really junky uh, well at least it's US UL listed um, but it's just a really junky soldering iron you know this is anything you can just go pick up for a few bucks at your local Walmart um, don't get yourself a nice one to do this with by all means but um, but as a sacrificial animal for something like this um, it's well worth it in my opinion you know the the plastic's going to change color a little bit you're you you are burning it a little bit but quite frankly you're, the goal the goal is to is to shorten prep time on these models uh so that you can get on with painting um because let's face it outside of you sadists out there the sanding portion of this is uh the 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 least entertaining portion of this whole process um, and any little step that can help um, speed this process up, in my opinion, is a good thing. Hopefully the camera is focusing. If it's not, I sincerely apologize. Like I said, this channel for, for now, I'm certainly going to be working on it and uh, trying to make it better. Um, but... I'm, I am an army of one in this shop, and I still uh, have orders that I have to finish and kick out the door. It's opportunities like this where I go, hey, you know, I'm going to do something that maybe other folks haven't tried or are unaware of. I'm going to take a few extra minutes to uh, set up and shoot a little bit of video. That's my goal with this channel is just to uh, share and spread what I do, how I do it. Um, hopefully, uh, hopefully you folks dig it and hang with me. Um, I know I certainly appreciate it. Um, you know, being, uh, being an army of one and relying on this as my income, uh, I'll be honest, the goal is definitely to, uh, to, to break those numbers to where I can, uh, monetize and get a little bit of extra income flowing in. It helps me continue to do Quite frankly, the one thing in life that I've ever really genuinely enjoyed doing, um, and uh, and it helps me continue be in a position where I can continue to uh, to do this and hopefully share some tips and tricks. I know a lot of you have been uh, asking uh, uh, about my paint, my paint techniques. Um, some of them may be orthodox, some of them may not be orthodox, but uh, they've worked for me over the years, and they've just been. Things that I've picked up uh, over 20 years of, uh, of hobbying doing this. Um, and I'd be more than happy to, uh, to show those to you. And hopefully you glean some knowledge from them and it helps your, uh, your hobbying become that much more pleasant. That is my goal anyway. So I'm going to continue on tracking and uh, we'll come back. All right, just a quick phase in, uh, just to give you guys an update of where we're at. You know, we've been doing this for, uh, let's see, eight minutes so far. This, this is underside, underside of his whole, uh, you know, back helmet portion. This is the underside after doing our, our iron technique. Um, you know, it helps move, uh, uh, melt everything, helps smooth everything. And once I come back through with an emery board, it'll hit the high spots, knock it down quick and dirty. And quite frankly, this, in my opinion, is much faster and much easier than trying to get in here, goop your, goop your Bondo in or goop your filler in, wait for it to dry and then come back through and, and sand. Um, and there again, some of you naysayers, you may be going, well, Matt, that's ugly as hell. Fair enough. I can handle that opinion. Um, in the meantime, I think once it's sanded, I think we're going to be in really good shape. That struck me while I was doing this. Uh, you know, I, I see posts uh, where folks are doing a model with uh, where they might have a joint that's going going across a portion of the model that has uh, a lot of detail. Uh, your goal is to try and then or your conundrum is then to be forced with either leaving leaving the joint seam or trying to blend it in which is going to involve sanding 
and losing some of the model's details. Um, with a fresh sharp point on an iron, you could get away with murder on this. With a really deft hand, I think you could get away with really getting in there, kind of melting that seam a little bit, coming back through, take an emery board, cut it, just cut a sliver off of that sucker and come back in and nick it a little bit. And you could, you know, uh, you'll hear me say close enough for government work a lot uh, because that, that that's the case when you're doing any any consistent modeling and you're just trying to get stuff done. Um, there are just those times where, you know, getting it to the 98% mark is just good enough because you know that follow-up techniques are then just going to camouflage it uh, that much more. Um, so it's something to think about. Uh, but for the way it stands right now, I still have uh, about another inch and some change uh, to weld here and then a handful more. But otherwise, uh, we're pretty well done with hitting all of the uh, the ugly spots where supports were hitting or uh, or overhangs where that bottom layer wasn't so pretty you know uh, on, on a piece like this you know not very many people are going to end up looking at that at that under lip but it's nice it's nice to go that extra little bit of detail um, i'm going to do the same right here right along this portion of detail and then we'll do a little bit of smoothing across the uh, the top of the head and then move on to tack welding all right, and we're back again. Um, the way it stands right now, you know, we've hit the uh, the underlying layer of these where you could see the layers starting to stack as they did the uh, the curve of these back plates. Um, just a really quick run on the ironing uh, with the iron has uh, has just kind of smoothed things out just enough to to get rid of the layer lines. Once we hit it with an emery board, it'll clear itself up. And uh, here we're starting to work all along the top here you can see very clearly the stack lines of the layers and bear in mind uh, this was printed in ABS at uh, 0.3 uh, layer heights um, so just to give you an idea of you know where we're where we're at with the piece uh, most of the vertical layer lines quite frankly once you throw a layer of primer and a base coat on that most of those tend to disappear um, whatever pops up after those two layers have dried we can then sand, throw one more base coat on if needed before moving on to final paint, but I find that that tends to take care of uh, most of the issues. Um, if you have layer lines like that, um, really the big key issues are always uh, where the layers stack. And uh, here we've already managed to smooth it about a third of the way. And all I'm doing is I'm just going back and forth, really light, really gentle, um, until I start to see it shine up and you can start to feel the plastic melt get a little bit of resistance and then you just keep right on working it little bit by little bit just to smooth those layer lines and you'll just watch them fade away I'm starting to feel like a little Bob, Bob Ross action here going on, but, and occasionally you'll feel you've let it sit just a second too long, you can come back through, just a couple quick passes and just smooth it right back on out. So that leaves that, and we'll do a little bit across the top of this here, and then we'll hit the top of these uh, six brain domes, and then uh, we'll be ready to rock and roll. All right, so just a quick update. Um, at this point, we finished uh, the top of the ridge, and what I've done is I've done the top three here and I haven't done the top three here, just so you can get a general idea of what we're looking at. Now, for any of you guys who have done, you know, car restorations or anything else, um, any kind of restoration really, you know, it's gotta look a little uglier before it looks better. Um, but you look at this and, and you can already see where we've managed to just completely get rid of the layer lines. Um, down in the nooks and crannies, the seams here where it would normally be very difficult to try and 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 get your sand in there um, it's very easy to just do a couple quick passes and it melts everything down just makes it that much smoother um, and so we'll continue on here and we'll do a quick pass with an emery board and see what our final results are like all right so um, bear in mind not every single joint is going to require that 
that stick filler method. You know, here where we had um, a joint that had flared just a little bit and we just needed to get some extra material packed in there, that's all fine and dandy. For, for joints like this where, you know, you're, I mean, you're less than a 16th um, away from each other, quite frankly, um, look, if you end up with a, with a hole in your drywall and you've got to patch your drywall, you patch your drywall, you, th you, you spray your texture on, you wait for it to dry, and then you come back through uh, with, your, with your paint. But let's say, you know, the paint that's on your wall is two years old. You're painting out of the same can, at least, but the goal is to try and blend it in as much as possible. You're not just going to paint that fresh patch of texture, right? You're going to feather it out in every direction by probably a good solid 12 to 15 inches so that it creates kind of this bigger uh, area and the further out it goes, the less paint there is and it, it blends things in. It's the same scenario here. You know, all we're doing is we're coming back through very lightly back and forth. And then all we're doing is we're just running up and down the model just a little bit, just to make sure that that patch is blended in. Now, bear in mind, you're gonna have a sheen difference. Um, you, it, by doing this technique, the plastic does tend to get a little bit shinier but that's what the emery boards are for. The emery boards are for, the, are, are for knocking down that sheen and, uh, and roughing up the plastic so that you're ready to, uh, to take that first coat of paint. But you can just watch that exterior little bit of those seams just blending and melting right into each other. And there again, don't use the point. You know, if you got to use the point to get down in a nook and cranny, be very light, be very careful, be very precise about what you're doing. Here, I'm using the, uh, you know, the 45 of this sucker, and I'm just really lightly just working it back and forth. And all it's doing is melting both edges of the layer and then blending them together in the middle. And to minimize how much sanding I had to do on this whole top seam up here, uh, where I did have to go through and uh, stick stick weld it a bit, uh, what I did come back, I, I came back through once I was done with other areas and it had time to cool, and I did this same smoothing method up here to eliminate the globs, to smooth everything out, and that and why, to uh, to make the sanding cleanup process that much easier. Honestly, I think when this is done, this is really going to require absolutely minimal uh, work to blend the two together. And when you're done, no one will ever know that there was a seam there. So, down to one seam left. Uh, let me, oh, two seams left, excuse me. Let me uh, hop back on it, get these knocked out, and then we'll hit it with an emery board. All right, guys, so here we are. Um, the uh, the lowest joint is done. As you can see, I just hit it just really quick and dirty with, uh, with the emery board. Same for the second joint. Um, you know, I, you don't, you don't want to go to town on it because then you don't want to end up losing detail. The goal is just blending. That is, that is all that it is. And so we're just coming through with uh, these 100, 150 degree, uh, 100, 150 de uh, grit, excuse me, um, a BT YMS Emery boards. I buy these in, in bulk. I think they're like 30 packs or 60 packs off of Amazon. And I'll tell you, um, for me, Emery boards do 90 plus percent of the sanding in my shop. Um, very rarely do I pull out any kind of hand sander. Um, I do have a tabletop, uh, you know, stand up style uh, belt sander um, as well as an integrated disc sander. I do use those occasionally, but usually it's for um, planing just a little bit just to get my joints to line up. Um, it's just a nice quick and dirty way of, uh, of approaching it for glue joints. Um, but uh, outside of that, it just doesn't take all that much. And there again, you know, a large part of that is because I went back through and just lightly smoothed everything out. Um, Just 
just want to get rid of any kind of contours. I did have a couple of uh, lips like I was talking about earlier where uh, the joints may have been offset by just a hair. Um, and in that case, I was able to take the higher layer, work it down, slowly melt it, and just smooth it down. And so it creates its own, uh, its own little step. Um, in this particular case, it uh, the the offset was 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 so small that uh, it didn't even have to do much of a of a transition step between the two. Um, so that's what we're looking at there. We'll move on to uh, to the neck, and then we'll do a little bit of a touch up here and there around the head. And I'll come back and show you the final product. There we are. Uh, you know, I think it was probably, uh, oh, 12 to 15 minutes uh, worth of ironing and uh, and just a quick touch up sand. Um, you know, now the dome is feeling really nice and smooth. Uh, top here is all cleaned up. The, uh, the face details are nice and cleaned up. We had a weird uh, layer line here on the chin. Chin is all smoothed out. Uh, underside of the helmet is all nice and smoothed out seams are all nice and smoothed out and uh given the head the fact that we're going to be going uh you know uh, uh, a dark uh faux finish uh for for wood for the staff and we're going to be doing bright gold for the head um we'll go on ahead and throw a coat of primer on this throw a coat of gloss black on this um and uh see where we stand before we get on with uh Moving on with the uh, the finishing of this, and that will be another video for another time. But uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Um, let me know in the comments. Um, what'd you like? What did you not like? Uh, was the information helpful? Do you have more questions? Is there anything that I can do to answer? Um, and uh, are there other questions you might have, other topics that you might wanna see me uh, approach and cover? Um, I, you know, this this channel is more uh, about being for you guys uh, and trying to um, uh, attack the questions that I get asked on a regular basis um, and have for years whenever people see, uh, see my final results on my projects um, and just to inspire a little bit and go, hey, this is what I've got going on in my shop. Um, always feel free to pipe up and uh, show off what you've got in yours. I'd love to see it. Uh, quite frankly, there isn't a day that goes by that someone else's work doesn't just take my breath away and inspire me. Uh, I love these imagination machines. I love 3D printing. Um, and and I, I, I just love what they're able to crank out. It, it boggles my mind. Um, so keep in mind, um, uh, once we hit 250 subscribers, uh, I'll pick a, pick a subscriber at, uh, at random out of those. Uh, they'll get a uh, they'll get a code for Simplify 3D. Um, in the meantime, uh, please like and subscribe. Uh, I genuinely appreciate it, uh, and uh, I'm grateful to those who, of you who who already have done so. So uh, keep your eyes peeled. I don't think I'm going to have a uh, regular release schedule. I think these videos are just going to pop in uh, as uh, as the opportunities and ideas arise. Uh, but I uh, look forward to continuing to uh, share uh, both my projects and uh, whatever knowledge I have that can be beneficial to you. So thank you guys. Have a great day.